Hello, as you know, my name is Kain Tondogenius, and today we are going to discuss support vector machine. Why I decided to make this lesson for you is because uh, support vector machines is a, a topic that many people find so difficult to understand. And I think it's time I clarify uh, everything about support vector machine. And I've made these 20 slides, uh, you can see in the, in the side. I've made these 20 slides and I'm going to use it to explain support vector machine and we actually solve a support vector machine problem. If you like this presentation, I, I can also give it to you after now. But one thing I would like to tell you is try to follow the explanation first before you download this presentation to use for yourself. Um, so let's get started. Let's say in about four or five uh, lessons of maybe uh, 10 minutes each or even less, we are going to finish everything about support vector machine. Uh, then it becomes clay. I'll tell you it's not really very easy, but I can say uh, it's difficult But it requires some effort on your part. So take out a pen and a paper So that maybe when it comes to some things you need to write down then you write it down So I'm going to start right now. Uh, let's uh, get started and be sure that in, in no time you'll get used to it <clears throat> All right This is just an introductory page. Uh, I'm not going to say anything so the question is, let's start with what is support vector machine, because I, I see many uh, textbooks or many people trying to explain without giving a background information about support vector machine. Uh, before I continue, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my channel so that when I make new lessons, you get to know. Also, if you have any question, if you have anything you want me to explain, also tell me, leave it in the comment box below and I'm going to get back to you. So what really is support vector machine? This is the definition. A support vector machine is a numerical classifier that draws a single decision boundary that maximizes the, the margin between two classes of data. So anytime you hear of classifier, know that it's a machine learning uh, model or machine learning algorithm. So support vector machine is a branch of machine learning that does classification and that makes it to come under supervised learning. All right, so this is how it is illustrated. In this figure here, you can see that there are two classes. Uh, we have the blue class and we have the, the other class, the red class. So for us to get a line in between that maximizes the margin between the two sets of data, we need to know uh, what lines actually help us to determine this midpoint. So to get the midpoint, you must make sure that the line between the closest points of the blue point to the midpoint is equal to the line from the midpoint to the red line. I'm going to explain uh, why this is necessary as we move on. And also I would like you to know that support vector machine is just one of many other classifiers. There is also neural network classifier and other ones that could also classify data. For instance, this uh, Figure by the right, we have a line that classifies, divide it correctly, but in this case, uh, I did not. It doesn't uh, follow support vector machine uh, principles. It's not a support vector machine because you can see that it's not actually uh, in the midpoint. The mar margin between the two might actually not be uh, maximum. So, a question I would like to ask you is: Is it possible that we have two support vector machines in the same? Uh, for the same data set? Of course, you know that the answer is no, because if the mar margin have to be maximum, it means we have only uh, only one support vector machine. So this is what you... So only one uh, decision boundary. Boundary. So we can have more than one. So have these things, this things in mind. So the question now is what are support vectors and what is a hyperplane? I'll also clarify these. Support vectors are points that determine the decision boundary. So if there are 1,000 points, um, there's only a few points that determine the decision boundary, and that is the support vector, uh, support vectors. Now some used to think that support vectors uh, are the lines, these lines that are parallel to the, the decision boundary. These lines that are parallel to the decision boundary is not the support vectors. They are actually 
gotas. They are not support vectors, but they are actually called gotas. And we are going to get back to this in a minute. So this point, we can see the, uh, I can now outline this point using a paint. So we have this point here. We have this point. They are the support vectors, right? Good. In this case, how many support vectors do we have? We have three support vectors and we have this point here. We have this point here and we have this point here. So we have three support vectors here and we have two support vectors here. And we have the, the lines parallel to the decision boundary. This is the decision boundary. Let me just write it, decision boundary. So, okay, let me just write it out in full. I don't know if I write it correctly. So this is the decision boundary and the lines parallel to it is called the gutters. And the support vectors are always in the gutters. Take notes. We are going to use this uh, when we talk about the gutter constraint later. A hyperplane is a plane whose dimension is one less than the ambient plane. So if you have data set in two dimensional plane, like we have here, it means that the support vector machine, or the, sorry, it will, it will mean that the hyperplane here is just one dimensional line. If you have data scattered in uh, three dimension, the support vector, the hyperplane is going to be a two dimensional uh, plane, and so on and so forth. So uh, just take note that this is the definition in case there is a test you need to write. Let's move on. How do we de determine the decision boundary? That is the next question we are going to ask. One method is called the convex hull method. And we are going to determine the decision boundary manually uh, by eye eyeballing, but that is looking at it and we know the decision boundary. And we also look at the way the computer will actually do it uh, using so many data points. In our example that we are going to use, we have just a few data sites or data points. But in the real practical example, we can have up to a hundred, one thousand or hundreds of thousand data points. And then we need a formal way of determining the decision boundary. So one method is called the convex hull method. And it says in this method, we draw a line joining the different data points without having a convex shape. So in this case, you have something like this. Let me see if I can draw it. Oh, this. So simply draw a line joining the points. So this. So what method is this? Is the convex hull method. So in this in this case, you also do the same thing. So actually, it's supposed to be straight line. So in this way, you see that this. Is not a support vector and of course these are not support vectors so using this convex hull method we easily can see which uh, point or data point are actually support vectors maybe this one maybe this one maybe this one so but for now this is how the convex hull method works and the same goes for this one so in this case we have something like this So if we draw for this side, so if you have a pen and a paper, if you want to follow along, that will be fine. So in this case, you can see that this seems to be the support vectors we have, and these are not support vectors. So this is a convex hull method to determine the decision boundary, because in support vector problems, the, 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 the challenge is to determine the decision boundary. Let's now take a typical example and solve a support vector machine problem, right? We are going to solve a support vector machine problem, hoping that you understand these terms because we are going to be using this term. We are going to start from the beginning of this problem and break it down all the way to the end. So this is our, the basis for our problem we are going to solve. And it will be something like this. I'm going to stop this video and we continue in the next video uh, that is the second uh, lesson and we keep moving on so remember to like and subscribe and please continue with uh, part two of this